Lawmakers in Japan's lower house have given the green light to nuclear energy deals with Turkey and the United Arab Emirates. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and the leaders of the two countries signed agreements last May for Japan to supply them with nuclear technology. Turkey and the UAE will have to use nuclear power for peaceful purposes only and accept international inspectors as part of the deal. A majority of lower house members voted for bills approving the agreements, but some opposition Democrats didn't go along. They skipped the diet session or left the chamber before the vote. They say the party's support for the bills goes against its policy of phasing out nuclear power by 2030. The dissidents include Naoto Kan. He was prime minister at the time of the 2011 Fukushima accident. Since then, Khan has opposed nuclear power. The bills now go to the upper house for final approval. Northern Japan has filed for an injunction to stop the construction of a nuclear power plant in a nearby town. The municipality would be the first in the country to seek such a ruling. Hakodakite City, the northernmost main island of Hokkaido, filed a lawsuit with the Tokyo District Court against the central government and the plant's operator, Jay Power. Hakodate is demanding that the defendants halt the ongoing construction of the plant in Oma Town, Aomori Prefecture. It's located about 23 kilometers south of the city across the Tsugaru Strait. Municipalities within a 30 kilometer radius of a nuclear power plant are required to evacuate in the event of an accident. We have repeatedly asked that the construction be stopped, but the request has not been heard at all, and they have done nothing in response. How could that the city leaders say if an accident occurred at the Oma nuclear plant, the damage would be so great it could no longer function? The Nuclear Regulation Authority said it will not comment on the lawsuit as it has not read its content. J-Power officials say it is regrettable the suit, has fi the suit uh, was filed and that they will uh, present their argument in court. The head of a new company that will oversee the decommissioning of Fukushima Daiichi has promised to make the safety of workers a priority. The entity is part of the nuclear plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company. But now Hiro Masuda said on Friday his staff will be able to respond swiftly to any issues inside the facility as they will report to their managers directly and not to TEPCO. By completing the work, we're trying to bring the Fukushima back to how it was before. Masuda says he wants to improve the work environment at the plant and protect staff. A worker recently died in an accident while on duty. The new company has been given sole responsibility of the decommissioning work as well as the task of stemming radioactive wastewater leaks. Masuda says he will also focus on securing enough workers as the process could take decades. The Japanese government will take temporary measures to secure more foreign workers for construction. The industry is facing a labor shortage ahead of the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. Cabinet ministers approved a set of policies on Friday. One measure allows foreign workers to extend their stay for up to two years. That would be under a government-sponsored technical internship program. Other steps include granting re-entry permits to them for up to three years. Government officials say these changes will secure about 70,000 workers. It's vital to quickly respond to construction needs. The government will do its utmost to make the Games a success by securing workers both inside and outside the country. But another minister stressed the need for proper immigration control. Justice Minister Sadakazu Tanigaki said without it, security and foreign, foreigners' human rights could be compromised. A UN report says the 2011 nuclear accident at Fukushima Daiichi is not likely to cause a significant rise in new cancer cases in the immediate era, area. For the vast majority of those exposed in Japan, 
there is no discernible increase in future cancer rates expected, which means, in other words, cancer rates will remain stable. The UN Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation released the report on Wednesday. It includes analyses by over 80 leading scientists from around the world on radiation and its effects following the accident. Regarding children who are deemed especially vulnerable, the report says there is theoretically an increased risk of thyroid cancer. It advises continued regular health checks. The report also notes that the monitoring of radiation exposure to plant workers was greatly delayed after the accident. It urges Japan to take appropriate measures, saying the exposure data during the early stages of the crisis is unclear. That was bullshit. There are still many people living in contaminated areas around Fukushima, forced to remain because of family commitments or for economic reasons. They live with the worry that constant exposure to radiation will cause future health problems. But the national and prefectural governments have been resistant to providing evacuation assistance, asserting that low-level exposure, which to them means under 20 millisieverts annually, has no adverse health effects. The collective evacuation lawsuit is an effort to, at the very least, protect children from further exposure in this situation. The case was made that children have a right to education in a safe place where radiation levels are lower than one millisievert per year. The case has been filed twice and was rejected both times. Toshio Yanagahara is the attorney who filed the lawsuit. Here, he explains more about the complicated details of the case. Mr. Yanagahara your case was heard for a second time at the High Court in Sendai, where the decision was once again not in your favor. The reasoning is extremely difficult to understand. Can you tell us a little more about this? This type of litigation has two tiers. First, there is a scientific lawsuit where scientific evidence pertaining to the dispute is examined before a decision is reached. Based on that decision, the next step considers which laws are germane to the dispute. The unique point of the collective evacuation lawsuit was that the first scientific portion of the decision was taken 99% in our favor. We argued that the children's health and lives are in serious danger due to low-level radiation exposure. The judgment even stated that to protect the children's health, the only alternative was evacuation. At first, the reasoning made us feel like we had won the case. We could even say that the initial phase was perfect. But when we moved into the second phase, the situation changed. There was a lot of reasoning and logic, but to put it simply, they said that although it is dangerous for children, families should go ahead and evacuate on their own if they agree about the danger. But the government is obligated to provide a safe place for children to be educated. And this obligation is what we stressed. Unfortunately, the municipality of Koryama said that they don't have that obligation in this case. I was so surprised that the court would say that the children are in danger on one hand, but reject the idea that the evacuation is required. It looks like a timely evacuation of the children is going to be difficult. What do you think is going to happen from now on? And are there any efforts to try to help the children despite the situation? I don't really want to say this, but in Chernobyl, after four or five years, Everyone thought the accident was over, that it was okay to return to regular life. But after the five-year mark, health effects increased dramatically, and many people were taken aback. They felt like they had been lied to and betrayed, and finally became angry. Their protests led to the standards being set for evacuation of citizens. We have the example of Chernobyl. I did not want to repeat what happened there. 
which is why we filed a collective evacuation lawsuit. It hasn't been easy. The media has ignored us, and we are misunderstood. But it was announced in early February this year that 74 children have already tested positive for thyroid cancer. This is 35 times the amount of children in Belarus at the three-year mark. The meaning of this is very serious. Aside from thyroid cancer, there will be other health effects, such as leukemia and immune disorders. Thyroid cancer is just one illness, but it is also a sign that we can surmise that the other things might be wrong too. In Belarus, health problems sharply rose at the four- and five-year mark. It will soon be four and then five years after Fukushima. I can't imagine what kind of panic will ensue. When I think about that, I believe that the only option is evacuation. So we need to go back to square one and start over. Having to file a lawsuit like this is strange. Upper House member Taro Yamamoto says, why do we have to file such a lawsuit? If the administration had instituted a policy of evacuation, we wouldn't have to file this lawsuit. Because the administration didn't do anything, citizens have to express their dissent somehow. This lawsuit is saying, what the hell are you doing? More Japanese elementary school students will learn about the March 2011 disaster in their textbooks starting next school year. Members of an education ministry council completed screening 139 elementary school textbooks that will be used in classrooms. About a quarter have descriptions of the massive earthquake and tsunami that struck northeastern Japan three years ago. Some social studies textbooks contain photos showing how tsunami triggered the Fukushima nuclear accident and the efforts to decontaminate affected areas. The 20 Olympics in Tokyo are still six years away, but members of the organizing committee are hard at work. They've welcomed an advanced team from the International Olympic Committee. The IOC group met with their hosts and visited the planned site of the athletes' village. John Coates leads the advanced team. He was one of the organizers of the 2000 Games in Sydney. You've got very good programs, you've got a wonderful institute of sport and um, uh, there will be a lot of other countries that will help you in sports where you're not quite as strong and um, I'm looking forward to a very successful Japanese team. Coates also discussed the organizers' plan to rebuild the national stadium as the main Olympic facility. They estimate the project will cost around $3 billion. He said the IOC could work with them to find less expensive options. The IOC team is scheduled to make an official inspection in June.